In this anatomical overview, the bones of the hand are shown. Highlighted now is the third metacarpal and fourth metacarpal. The adjacent joints are the carpometacarpal joint and distally the metacarpophalangeal joint. Visible now are the extensor tendons of the hand. Note the intertendinous connections, which are located over the distal thirds of the metacarpals. Care should be taken not to damage them or the extensor tendons. The sensory nerve branches and the dorsal digital veins, shown now, are susceptible to injury and should also be protected throughout the procedure. The skin is marked on the dorsal surface of the hand with a longitudinal line between the two targeted or fractured metacarpal bones, in this case the third and fourth. The skin is incised in line with the skin markings in a longitudinal direction. The skin flaps are retracted laterally, exposing the underlying tendons. The surrounding subcutaneous tissue is dissected in line with the skin incision, exposing the underlying tendons. The fascia of the hand is dissected to free all the extensor tendons overlying the periosteum. This image shows all the freed tendons after dissection of the fascia. Take note of the extensor digitorum to the middle finger, as well as the intertendinous band connecting the tendon of the third and fourth fingers. The extensor tendons are attracted together with surrounding loose connective tissue to either side of the wound. The periosteum overlying the bone is then incised. The periosteum is then lifted using a periosteal elevator off the surface of the fourth metacarpal bone and third metacarpal bone. This image shows the exposed fourth metacarpal and third metacarpal bones. Note that the resection of the periosteum can extend proximally toward the carpometacarpal joint or distally towards the metacarpophalangeal joint depending on the desired extent of bone exposure. The periosteum is positioned over the surface of the bone. The periosteum is now being pointed out. It is advised to cover the surface of the bone with periosteum, especially in the case of implant insertion, to minimise its contact with the extensor tendon. The skin is closed with a continuous non-absorbable suture.